Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah. Ashhadu an la The unpredictable Libyan strongman Muammar Gaddafi was an unexpected guest columnist in this week's New York Times op-ed section. His letter to the Times published the day after the inauguration was entitled The One State Solution. It was a most interesting read. In fact, I had to read it several times to absorb what he was really saying. This is, after all, Muammar Gaddafi of Libya. Gaddafi was the original terrorist chieftain and ally of great terrorist leaders of the past like Yasser Arafat. His letter outlining the history of the region was both thoughtful and devoid of the usual historical revisionist uh, revisionism regarding the region. For example, he writes, the basis for the modern state of Israel is the persecution of the Jewish people, which is undeniable. The Jews have been held captive, massacred, disadvantaged in every possible fashion by the Egyptians, the Romans, the English, the Russians, the Babylonians, the Canaanites, and most recently, the Germans under Hitler. The Jewish people want and deserve their homeland. Gaddafi argues against land for peace, correctly noting that a two-state solution will create an unacceptable security threat to Israel. An armed Arab state, presumably in the West Bank, would give Israel less than 10 miles of strategic depth at its narrowest point. Further, a Palestinian state in the West Bank and Gaza Strip will do little to resolve the problem of refugees. Any situation that keeps the majority of Palestinians in refugee camps and does not offer a solution within the historical borders of Israel-Palestine is not a solution at all. As I said, I had to read it several times. It sounds so uncharacteristically conciliatory. But then, down near the end was the poisoned barb hidden inside the apple. Gaddafi continued, in absolute terms, the two movements must remain in perpetual war or a compromise must be reached. The compromise is one state for all, an Isra time that would allow the people in each party to feel that they live in all of the disputed land and they are not deprived of any one part of it. It's a masterful argument, but in the end, it's really just a repackaging of the old right of return argument that would flood Israel with millions of Arab refugees. Gaddafi's article concludes, a key prerequisite for peace is the right of return for Palestinian refugees to the homes their families left behind in 1948. It is an injustice that Jews who were not originally inhabitants of Palestine, nor were their ancestors, can move in from abroad while Palestinians who were displaced only a relatively short time ago should not be so permitted. There's a glaring error of history in this statement. The Jews' ancestors are from this land. One of the fundamental themes of the Bible is that God unconditionally promised the land of Israel to the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob forever. And God never breaks his word. Israel's great danger is this. If it receives as citizens every Muslim claiming to be an immediate descendant of Palestinians displaced in the 1948-49 war, it would cease to exist with the very next democratic election. Gaddafi has hired himself a very clever ghostwriter. Unfortunately, he will probably convince the many who do not know or care about the true history of this area.